Hello, uh, welcome to episode 159 of Retro Power Uncut. And uh, actually, you've got me for the whole tour again, because uh, Nat's on holiday this week. I believe he's gone to the Lake District, uh, possibly in his camper van. I'm not actually sure. I haven't heard from him. Didn't want to bother him while he's away, but just in time, <laughs> as Jamie's just said, just in time for a massive storm. Uh, Lake District, wonderful place when it's sunny and dry, miserable place when it's rainy. Uh, right, Project Churchill. Um, Continuation of lead work, is, <laughs> as it's uh, been the theme recently, but it is looking really quite good. Stu's just been on with doing the lead around where we've deleted the um, side marker lights here. Um, and Tom's been carrying on just doing some of the final shaping around the back end. Um, I think Stu's been on with a little bit of shaping work on the bonnet, just to get the bonnet fit a bit better. And then that opens up just finishing off this leaded area at this side of the scuttle here. Um, but yes, generally all going in the right direction on that. Um, We've done the shaping work on the front end for where these air intakes are. So I think I mentioned last week we were gonna, we'd modeled them, we're gonna do a 3D print so we could use that to shape the, the bodywork at the front there. And then Stu's made a nice little um, simple press tool or hammer form tool to basically allow him to hammer around that flange there to give it a bit of stiffness, created a flat plinth. They sit nicely on there. Um, and then these will eventually be uh, a machined brass uh, part with, that's copper plated with a mesh inside it. Um, so that's looking good. Uh, another thing Stu's done is he's just been revisiting and making a new safety catch for the bonnet because with our revised cooler pack, the original catch is just a bit tight on the aircon condenser. So he's made, the original was sort of two layers. He's just made a single thickness one to replace that. Um, and then we finished the model for the grill surround. I mentioned last week we were kind of weighing up different uh, sort of manufacturing methods for that. Now we're going to get a dummy one machined in epoxy, uh, epoxy tooling block anyway, so we can use that as a, to shape the front bodywork. Um, however, the customer rang me earlier and said that because his in his dim and distant past he was involved in the casting industry uh he would quite like it if it was a casting so um i think that's the direction we're going to go with it however he made a very sensible suggestion which i don't know why i haven't really thought of before which was casting it oversized and then machining it back if, if we were worried about the surface finish of the casting which is a fair a fair shout so I think that's probably what we'll do. We'll use the model of the actual size one for the mock-up, and then we'll do a slightly bigger version to do the sand cast, cast it oversize, and then machine it back. Sounds like a pretty good plan. So yeah, looking good on that. I think we're getting extremely close to being able to strip all this down. Adam finished last week his kind of um, parts listing process, um, which is basically going through every component on the car at this stage and sort of making a record of that and then alongside that having processes that might need doing parts that might need replacing etc and we've got a, like a color coding system um you know if the part's literally the, going to be the final one and it's ready to fit it'll have a green color code if it's the final one but it needs something doing to it it'll have a, an orange color code if it's something that needs replacing and therefore ordering it'll have a red color code etc um so he's gone through and made a good note of all of that so we can strip this down kind of safe in the knowledge that we've got a record of everything from the dry build process along with photographic uh, coverage of everything so when it goes to actually be built fingers crossed it should go reasonably smoothly um, so that's where we're at with that oh yes Jamie's just reminded me there was one other thing Stu was just working on the end pieces for the side moulding so there's a We've deleted some of the um, body mouldings on this, but there will still be one that runs down the side of here, along the door, it kind of flows into the door handle and goes along the rear quarter. And I think we've mentioned previously, we'd got some long lengths of that extrusion from Martin Roby's kind of unformed ones so that we could do a longer version for the back quarter because normally there's not a, there's not one long enough to to modify any of the other ones for the rear quarters um, so we've got those sections but at the very end we want ours to sort of taper out to a point rather than just being a flat cut off end so Stu shaped some little brass ends um, that will then get brazed into the end of that side moulding which is also brass um, so we can finish those side mouldings so I think we've got all the parts for the side mouldings now we got the gutters done which we showed previously so the vast majority and we i think we also mentioned about the fact we we'd ha were happy with doing a brazed joint on the window frame so we can make the window frame out of two originals um i've done some testing on the joint 
So all that's, I think the only bit we've got left to do as custom kind of bright work on it is the surround around the rear window, um, which I'm sure we'll come up with a solution for. It doesn't really affect anything on the body because it's a, we've got kind of flip open rear quarter lights on it. Um, so as long as we've got the shape, it's the same both sides, we can come back to it. In, in terms of making the frame, we can just make the frame shape afterwards. It doesn't have to be trial fitted on the body. So that is that. Um, Redux number four, a couple of areas of attack. Scott's been on with the towing eye arrangement. So on these we changed, because we've got carbon fiber, well it's all carbon fiber bodywork, but the carbon bumpers, in the process of redesigning them and tidying everything up, we got rid of the towing eye covers uh, and redesigned the towing eye system to have screw in towing eyes. And the front one kind of goes up under the bumper. The rear goes, just sneaks under the bumper and goes into like a heavily reinforced part of the spare wheel well. So Scott's been on with that. Um, he just finished the tail end of making the, arch, the widened arch tubs on it as well. Um, and then Sam was on this for a little while as well, going through deleting all the unnecessary holes in the engine bay, made a bit of a start on some of the seam brazing, started hammer forming this section, which goes in the inner wing this side where the dry sump tank sits. Um, so that's, uh, that's all going in the right direction. Um, I'm gonna go here, so E-type, I mean, actually, although I'm gonna gesticulate towards the car, most of the work on this really has been up in the design studio. Um, George has been mainly on with this for the last couple of weeks. Um, Sam, when he was last on it, was just finalizing the positions of the seats. So the owner could come over, which he did last week, um, spent a good amount of time sitting in it, seeing how he was happy with the seating position. We did conclude that the MX-5 base is certainly the way to go in terms of getting you as low as possible in the car. Um, the only thing we did discover is that the steering wheel was a little bit low in the position we'd determined. I think probably because we've ended up with a slightly more reclined, slightly more knees up driving position, that's just resulted in the steering wheel being a little closer to his legs than was comfortable. Now we've got an electric adjustable column in it, so you can electrically move it up and down and in and out. Um, and there was enough clearance with it fully up but only just so it makes it didn't really make sense to have uh, to be completely at one side of your of your adjustment in his favored position so we're doing some modifications which sam started on that sort of um bulkhead front dash assembly there so we can get the steering column a little bit higher and what we'll probably aim for is having it in the owner's sort of ideal position when it's in the center of its adjustment so that's that sort of prong of uh, attack and then with his driving position confirmed and the seat position confirmed, that meant George could take the next step on doing the roll bar design. So I've, I'm sure I've talked about before the fact that this is going to have not a, not a normal convertible top. We're trying to make it really clean in this back area. And the only time it's ever going to need a top is if the only gets caught in a rainstorm or it's parked somewhere overnight. Um, so what we're going to have is a fold up roll bar that then a canvas top can be stretched over and attached along the top of the windscreen. Um, and obviously the position of the, dr of the driver dictates the height that roll bar has to be, and the height that roll bar has to be dictates when it's folded down the shape of the rear of the cabin area here. So with that information now sorted, he's gone ahead, played with different sort of slight profiles and shapes of roll bar. We've got one we're happy with. Um, it, it sort of sits in a nice position when it's down, gives just you know, the right amount of clearance when it's up. Um, we're kind of just going through the, the design iterations at the minute because it's easy to get bogged down in trying to make a roll bar look good. When in reality, the only time it's ever gonna be up is the brief moment before you put the soft off over. However, us being us, we still want it to look good. So um, he's trying to get a profile that looks, looks nice even when there's no top over it, if for whatever reason you wanted to drive it with the roll bar up. Um, and then also just trying to weigh up all of the other cosmetics. So he's modeled a, a sort of rough interpretation of how the soft top um, will stretch over that to make sure the roof shape looks vaguely pleasing when it's in place, um, which it does actually. I think we're, we're getting really happy with it. We've done a few more changes on the rear end shape. Um, we're just sort of looking at it and going away and looking at it and going away. You sort of start to notice things that maybe the slight proportions you're not happy with. Um, so we've actually inflated the rear haunches here slightly. Um, 
compared to where we'd got to with the last iterations of design because we were starting to think this area here looks a little bit thin but we didn't want to bring the arch level down over the wheel again um, but I think the last set of renders that he sent me which was literally about 10 minutes ago uh, I'll, we were both really happy with how the proportions were looking so hopefully we're on the right track with that um, and then with that sort of set we can then start working on the metal work in here that's going to mount and house that roll bar when it's retracted so watch this space Obviously, there isn't a Jensen Interceptor over here. Um, Austin Allegro's. So, um, mainly, Bobby's been on with replicating the cooler pack. So, you, the last few weeks, we've been showing him constructing all the cooler pack um, mounting and housing area in there, which will have the radiator and the AC condenser and the fans. And he's basically duplicating that over to this. So, there's no point in me going massively into the detail on that. Um, Simultaneously to that, uh, Luke has been looking at some interior design stuff on this. He started now looking, we've, we've done all the sort of fundamental shapes of the dash that we're going for. We've got a steering wheel design we're reasonably happy with. So we thought we'd move on to just roughly modeling the door cards. Um, and that kind of allows us to do an all round inter interior cabin render so we can start playing with interior colors and fabrics etc and also that's kind of led us on to just having a bit of a play with exterior colors we've got kind of the, the main gist of what we want with one of them um basically a <laughs> baby shit green as everybody keeps calling it but uh, we're looking at actually some of the original allegro colors um the amusingly titled antique gold is uh, <laughs> is one that i'm quite keen on um which would work really well with like a chocolate brown leather interior and then we're thinking about maybe putting some brown corduroy in there as a bit of a 70s thing um and then the other one we're thinking a little bit more radical but ultimately we're at the stage where we're going to be presenting these ideas to the customer and they might go in a completely different tangent so we shall uh, see on that um in terms of slightly more exciting stuff the wheels have arrived i've got one set at the minute just to make sure we're happy with the dimensions Trial fitted, looked perfect. I mean, when I ordered them, we did a, a paper profile of kind of, if you imagine a cross section through the rim to check it against the brake caliper, but it's always slightly nerve wracking until it actually gets here. Um, but no, fits like an absolute glove. So might go ahead and order the tires now so we can actually roll these on their final wheels. And then Luke's been revisiting the grill. We'd got a cosmetic design in place for the grill and headlight surrounds we've had to edit it slightly because the fans and cooler pack ended up eating more into the grill area so we're we've ultimately got the same design but we're slimming it down and changing the way it mounts a bit so he's just working on that at the minute um, but that's all coming together nicely and then he's also been working on the ducts that sit behind these i think i mentioned that he was on with them last week um, so he's done like a, a section at the back that goes on the inside of here which serves a couple of functions. Primarily, it'll duct all of the air that comes through this vent through the cooler pack. Um, but it also means that when you look through this vent, which is because it's quite coarse mesh, you can see quite clearly through there, it'll just have a nice appearance on the inside rather than looking at the, the sort of metal work of the inside of the valance. Um, so they'll probably be 3D printed in nylon, I would have thought, and then the front parts will be billet aluminium. So that is that. Um, the Escort is... Uh, Project Kuma is obviously absent at the minute and that's because it's in the paint booth for me to do the bum clenching uh, masking and painting job. So we've we finally settled on the colours for the pinstripes. Essentially all of the hand pinstripers I spoke to and a couple of people suggested a few people around here and I have tried a couple of people around here but they were all a bit nervous about the job because it's a heck of a long stripe and I know everybody will pipe up and say oh the guy at Rolls Royce does it because we've all seen the videos but uh, essentially they were all very nervous about doing it so I've decided to change tack slightly and go with masking it out and, and just literally aerosoling in cellulose and then because we're going to encase it all in lacquer anyway so that, that will work perfectly well it's just quite painstaking doing the fine line because I want to get all the stripes the same width but I've got a mask over the first one because it's two pinstripes literally side by side, no gap between them, um, which means I've got to set kind of the upper border, set the thickness of the top stripe, then set the thickness of the bottom stripe, then do another mask line under that, then peel out the one I'm going to paint, paint that, then mask over that again, then peel out the second one and paint that, and then unmask it all. Um, now, I know another thing people are probably going to pipe up at that point is that you can get, and it is extremely useful, coach line masking, which is basically a section of masking tape that's all pre-scalpeled at certain widths, so you can peel certain parts out. However, on this job, it's not really ideal 
A, because there's quite a substantial curve at the back where it curves down the rear panel and that stuff doesn't really curve very nicely. Um, and B, because I've got a re-mask over one of the lines, it doesn't really gain me that much anyway. So it's good old fashioned uh, 3M, three millimeter fine line tape on that. Uh, right, so look what's going on in here. So lurking under here is the Morris, which is back from detailing. Um, I shall probably get some video footage of this for next week, but for the minute, we're trying to keep it covered as much as we possibly can, just to, so we don't ruin Dale's hard work on it. Um, suffice to say, it does look absolutely stunning. Um, we sent it over there without the rear wings on. He's basically detailed everything inside and out. He, he kind of revisited the lack of finish because with it being quite a long while now since we painted it, it just gone a little, it settled a little bit, gone a little bit dull. So went back over it with uh, just wet sanding it with I think 3000 grit on a DA. Um, polished it all up, ceramic coated everything, um, everything inside, engine bay. And in the meantime, we've done uh, our own sprayed PPF. Now on the subject of that, somebody asked whether I knew someone who could offer that. Uh, we will be able to offer that. So watch this space on that. Uh, I will do some announcements on that fairly soon, but we've done a sprayed PPF on the rear wings, which has come out really good. Um, but I'll go into that a bit more in a separate video. Um, so yeah, well, this is essentially just kind of waiting for collection. I think I'm going to write the uh, owner's manual for it. Um, I think there might be a couple of other tiny little details, but that's looking good to go. Um, and on that subject, the Stratos, uh, Alex was going over more map refinement last week. He's carried on with that and it is now in a position where we're, we're all really happy with the kind of cold start and idle mapping on it. Starts first crack, does a nice little blip, settles really quickly into a steady idle, uh, which is massive, massively, massively improved. And also just the general traffic driving is a lot improved. However, the only one negative on that is that we noticed after we did a firmware update on the dash display, which is a life racing dash, started getting a random flicker on it. So and we couldn't really get to the bottom of it. So we've removed that and sent it back to life racing for them to have a look at. So hopefully they'll be able to resolve that pretty soon. Um, right, uh, Mark One Escort. Adam's looking at the fly-by-wire throttle motor mounting. So we're, we're very close to the point we'll be able to actually get the engine and box in the car. The only thing we're waiting for is the um, stone guard plate that we made which sits between the engine and box and avoids any stones being able to get kicked up into the flywheel um, we've made those they've been sent off to be xylan coated which is occurring right now hopefully we'll get them back early next week so in the meantime we're just tackling anything that's going to be easier with the engine out so he's taking some measurements for the alternator mounting because we've still got to do the alternator mount and the bosses on the engine this side so we can design and make the throttle uh, Genvy throttle actuator mount which is essentially a motor that's a servo motor that actuates the throttle um, because it's going to be fly by wire so we've got an electronic pedal in there and a, a motor actuating the throttle um, other than that that's pretty much ready to go so as soon as that Zion plate gets here we can stick the gearbox on and get that lot in the car um, Sort of other, other news on this is just the arrival of masses of machined parts. So I think we were just touching on the fact they were imminent last week, but huge batches now arrived. So that includes not only for this car, but also for the sister project, Project Kuma. The front speaker grills, there's little badges that go into those which are a separate machine part. The rear speaker grills, um, the window winder handles and the knobs that go on them, the door release uh, handles. Um, what else was in that batch of stuff? I know there was some more, I can't think what it was. Um, I forget, but there's now a massive, massive batch of parts awaiting anodizing. Because um, also we've got the tanks from the engine bay, the dry sump tank, um, just absolutely stacks of parts going away for anodizing. So once all that gets back, we're kind of in a position to start building that up. Um, just behind the camera here, the Camaro, which I have to say is looking absolutely amazing. Um, one thing I love about these is just how kind of clean and tidy the glass looks. So there's such, such minimal framework around it. Um, and one thing I can never really understand is the, on the sort of deluxe, I don't know if it's the RS or whatever model, they, they had a huge chrome trim that came down here. In fact, I think this one had them originally. And I think it absolutely ruins the look of them. I think this thin line of stainless steel around here and around the top, um, and the fact the glass sits really flush outboard really makes the look of these things. Um, so yeah, 
had, as you probably guessed, that's what Anthony's on with. So glass fitment, um, both rear quarter lights and the door window glasses. He's done this side, the other side is just on with it at the minute. Um, it's got electric lifters, so that's, that adds a further complication when getting it all fitted because you have to motor them up and down. Um, but it's going well. Um, and then it, sort of other news on this is the fact that we're going to hope to push towards a first fire up on it fairly soon. The owner said he was he was passing by early next month. Um, and is there any chance it might be able to see it running? And we were kind of going over it earlier. And actually, I don't think it's that far off. So fingers crossed, we're going to do a push to uh, actually make this running in the next couple of weeks. So watch this space. Uh, and talking of stunning, sort of flush, minimal framed side glass, something I love about these is exactly that so long-term followers will know this is a car we built a long while ago um can't think exactly when now but it was probably 20 i feel like it was probably 2017 something like that um back in because there's a couple of things it's got a coolant leak on the radiator which i think is actually a, a leak on the core itself uh coolant cooling fan Apparently it stopped kicking in. I don't know. This was reported to me by the guy who took it for an MOT. I don't know if it was linked to the coolant leak or not, but it, it certainly hasn't been run sort of overheated. So we're just investigating whether that's a problem or not, or whether it is just a coolant leak. Um, and then just a general general check over it all. We've been over the underside. Wasn't really a lot to report. Slightly perished anti-roll bar bushes. Um, slightly perished rear bump stop bushes. Um, but nothing major, uh, and then we're just going to revisit a couple of things inside. So, we the heat, the hot cold control on the AC, the, the knob broke, and we replaced it with just a sort of red and blue uh, illuminated push buttons. But actually, it would be nice to go with something a bit more cosme cosmetically in keeping. So we're going to go back to having a rotary control for that, and we'll probably just make some billet knobs so they're matching knobs because I think the other one, the fan control one, started to fall apart now. I mean, they are 1970s knobs probably made of Bakelite or something, so I suppose we shouldn't uh, be too surprised. Um, and I might also revisit the audio system on this. It's got a bit of a, an interference whistle on the audio, which I want to have a look at. So just little bits and bobs, really. Um, but it's great to see it back. It's, it was a big kind of game change car for us, I suppose. When we look back at it, there were certain cars throughout our sort of history of building cars that have been that have sort of pushed through to the next level. And I just this one always sticks in my mind because what was actually fairly subtle cosmetic changes with the quarter bumpers, the rear valance, the shape of the rear arches and tidying up the front bumper made a huge difference to how these, this car looks and this is a car that generated a lot of interest and we've actually got a couple more of these booked in to build over the coming years. Um, so yeah, super cool to have it back here. So that's that. Uh, Land Cruiser is looking a bit jaunty because we've got the back end jacked up to make some um, lengthened uh, leaf spring shackles for it. <clears throat> over, over the sort of period we've had it built up, I keep looking at it sometimes thinking it sits a bit low at the back and a couple of other people have said the same. And I wanted to sort of just see how it settled down and make sure it wasn't going to even up, but actually it still looks a little bit low at the back. So we've made some longer leaf spring shackles, which are away being Xyland along with the engine uh, stone guard. So we'll get that back on hopefully early next week. And then I think this is good to go at that point. Uh, and I think I'm whirling around here, yeah, just uh, making sure I haven't missed something. Um, but I think that is probably it for this week. Uh, I feel like, I always feel like there's something I've missed, which probably means there is something I've missed. <laughs> but if not, uh, we'll see you next week. In the meantime, go into our shop, retropower.co.uk. Uh, hoodies, beanies, t-shirts, mugs, coffee, uh, Knock yourself out and I shall see you next week.